my colleague, Mr. Prem Narayan from Secretary Women and Child, Dr. Arun Gupta, Mr. Dadich, and Joyce Chanista, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, participants, delegates to this very prestigious conference. Let me at the very beginning, on behalf of the chairperson of the Planning Commission, the Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, and the members of the Planning Commission, wish you a very warm welcome and a big thanks for coming to India for this conference. Frankly, I have, uh, I can't imagine ever having been to a conference which has been going on for the last three days and this is the penultimate moment and to have an audience which is so full of enthusiasm, spirits and vitality. So that's a great thing. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's the fact that every participant who came to get the award, there was a spring and an alacrity in their step. To me that is uh, indicative of the fact that when people take any issue as a passion, and the passion was reflected in the speeches of all the honorable speakers who pre preceded me and said a lot of the things that I would have also liked to say and said it much better. But I think it's that commitment that makes people stay on. Otherwise, why would you be here at the end of a Sunday? So I, I'm absolutely amazed. Over 885 countries, over 700 delegates, you know, this is... And then, I, I just want to say before anything, I, I say anything else is, I saw this news clipping as a curtain raiser to this conference. And it was done by a, a very committed journalist who covers these issues. But something like this should really hit the big time media. And I'm very disappointed that this not, did not get as much publicity as it really deserves. So, I, I mean, that goes to show that we, as people who believe in this issue, have a long, long way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been very well tutored in, in this particular subject by none other than Dr. Arun Gupta, mm -hmm. beginning the year 2004. When he started, he was the first person to, when I became member of the India's Planning Commission, he was the first person who came to see me, along with a very great woman mentor, <laughs> Dr. Veena Mazumdar. And they talked about this infant feeding practices, the, uh, the fact that we have an act, the fact that it is not really showing up on the ground, its enforcement was so poor, what are we going to, I mean, the whole, it started in 2004, <coughs> And I feel that when we, uh, when we listen to you and when we, when we listen to the words of this declaration that was so very well read out by, by my colleague here, I think the commitment that we need to make to the provisions of this declaration and the, and the work that is ahead of this group. Dr. Gupta said that you'll meet after three to five years, but I think that in between whatever the period periodicity of these meetings, whatever happens in between times, I think is going to really be the recognizing factor of how committed we all are. And let me assure you that government, I mean, let me, let me just backtrack and say for a minute that we all from 85 or 83 countries have so much to learn from one another. Mm. India is a huge country, but the fact is that Bangladesh has done very well on some of the indicators. <laughs> and I, I really want to say that. And so many other countries that I see present here, they all have their good practices. We all have reason to exchange those practices. And this, uh, I'm sure that has happened both formally and informally throughout the sessions. But this is a wonderful forum for that. 
Now, I want to first of all say that, uh, of course, uh, the, the people who have gone to make this uh, conference a success, you saw all the nuts and bolts of it coming out in, in the form of younger and older people. And I'm so glad that, you know, the men are here because mm. these become issues of women. And <laughs> how can they be issue of women? It's, 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 it's totally, I would say, a logical absurdity to think that breastfeeding and breastfeeding practices are issues of women. So the fact that men are here, men in very high positions, uh, the, the Honorable uh, Ambassador, the Honorable Minister, our own, very own WCD Secretary, Mr. Prem Narayan, you know, the commitment of the fact that of these people and from there to the youth, and I think that, that also is a, a great indication of the success of this effort for which I think each and every one of you deserves accolades. Uh, now, in India, let me just, uh, my, Mr. Prem Narayan has spoken about it, and in India we have also recognized that breastfeeding is, as somebody said, is a public health imperative. There is no question of that. But the fact is that how do we translate our objectives, how do we translate our policy pronouncements into reality on the ground? And uh, Mr. Prem Narayan has spoken about it. But I want to say to you that the 12th five-year plan, I'm a member of the planning commission, and we are in the, in, the, uh, in the business of writing the scenario for the country for every five years. And the 12th five-year plan, which will be, which will ensure and lay the roadmap for the health and the women and child paradigm from the year 2012 to 2017, will be a public document 10 days from now. So it's, it's there. And I want to assure you that we have, it's extremely important that children and women are, have been actually mainstreamed into the body of the plan. In other words, that women and children and health are not relegated to one or two chapters of the plan, but there is a, an effort to make those a cross-cutting theme. And by virtue of making a cross-cutting theme is to have the multi-sectoral strategies playing for women and children and nutrition. And let me also say, very. Fr I mean, I have to be upfront with a group like yours because we really have to get our facts right, that prior to the 11th plan, this is the 12th plan, prior to the 11th plan, children were not as much into focus and nutrition was all, almost totally invisibilized. So to bring nutrition up front and to make children the focal point has been one of the most important imperatives of this plan. So the chapter on women and children is called Women's Agency and Child Rights. And I think that rights-based approach is what needs to be emphasized. Extremely important, as your declaration has said, to have a budget line for breastfeeding. That is extremely important because it, it dedicates funding towards this imperative. At this point in time, the breastfeeding features in many programs and schemes in the plan. For example, the Integrated Child Development Scheme, the National Rural Health Mission, Indra Gandhi Matritra Sahyog Yojana, the Sabla Program, the National Rural Health Mission. These are all programs, a lot of words that I'm saying, some of them are in Hindi, a lot of you don't understand, but the point to say, the point that I'm trying to make is that from the birth of the child to nurture the child from birth to the child 
in a pre-nursery, preschool setting to the school setting and especially the emphasis on the adolescent girl child. And the scheme which targets the adolescent girl child so that the babies that are born are not subjected to intergenerational problems of malnutrition. Mm -hmm. So to break that cycle, emphasis on the adolescent girl child and then what, what has been spoken about a way of transferring cash to women so that they can be free from their daily drudgery labor in order to nurture, care and breastfeed the child. That is I think in a, a very important and that is what Indra Gandhi Matritva Sahyog Yojana which literally means to support the mother in nurturing and breastfeeding the infant. So I'm, I'm just saying this to you that these are schemes, Mr. Prem Narayan who is actually rolling them out on the ground can tell you that they are, it won't happen tomorrow but by the end of this plan period the scheme should be universalized across the country. In the beginning we would take 200 districts, 400 districts, you know in the beginning we will have to start a little small but the, the fact is that there is and recognition of the fact that women need to be freed and when they need to be freed they also need to be nurtured and just this I think that uh, the young uh, com uh, master of ceremonies, mistress of ceremonies in this uh, who's coordinating this had started off very beautifully the very first sentence she said was what does a child need the warmth, love, affection, the closeness of the body of the mother and mother's milk <laughs> And unless we bring the, the, the and, and that recognition has to be become a reality with us when the girl child to care and nurture for the girl child becomes important in the sense that that girl child which who we will act treat in a, as the most precious human being is our girl child because that girl child will then realize your dreams. And then the, I think the point was made by the Honourable Minister, this whole emphasis on giving the child nutritious, home-cooked meals, nourishment, what grows in our backyard and India is one country that has always I, I pride myself that I have lemons growing in my backyard. I have uh, uh, Saint Jen, I don't know what's the English word for it, but Saint Jen growing, which is now the wonder vegetable in the whole world, that grows in my backyard. My backyard contains what my child or my grandchild in my case would